Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. I'm pleased to rise to the Crimes Legislation Amendment Powers, Offences and Other Measures Bill 2015. I've got to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, if there's a community that has been perhaps particularly affected by crime, uh, and certainly by the perception of crime, and one which has had a detrimental impact on the main revenue source for the city, which is predominantly the tourism industry, it would have to be my city of the Gold Coast. As the federal member for Moncrief, I take seriously two aspects of my role. One is in relation to the protection of the income the city derives from the tourism industry and the need to safeguard the perceptions around our city. That is the need to ensure that as a city, uh, people's view about holidaying on the Gold Coast is a positive one, that they approach a holiday with enthusiasm uh, and know that they'll be safe if they choose to have a holiday, whether they're a domestic tourist or an international tourist on the Gold Coast. Uh, the second important aspect of my role as the federal member is to stand up for my community and ensure that my community feels safe, that they feel safe in their own homes, that they feel safe with their personal belongings, and in particular, of course, that parents can feel safe in the knowledge that their children are not being exposed to a drug culture or indeed to a culture of, for example, forced marriages, which would corrupt and over time, of course, diminish uh, the strength of the social fabric in our city. The Gold Coast is an amazing city. It's a wonderful place to raise a family. It's a terrific city uh, that has not only uh, a bright uh, daily outlook in terms of the weather, but also a bright outlook in terms of the future of our city. Moving swiftly to ensure that we're able to address uh, concerns in relation to crime uh, is an important aspect and one that I've been very pleased to be part of. I've got to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, one of the community forums that I regularly host as part of my ongoing commitment to engaging in a meaningful way with the community I have the privilege of representing uh, is through my crime forums. I hold forums with my constituents on a regular basis, small business forums, crime forums, town hall meetings, all centred around the importance of engaging and mixing and mingling with my constituents, giving them the platform and the opportunity to put forward their own points of view about what should be happening in our community, those aspects they like, those aspects they don't like. I was pleased relatively recently to host a crime forum uh, with the Justice Minister, the Honourable Michael Keenan. Uh, Minister Keenan travelled to the Gold Coast and took the time to meet, to mix, to mingle, to hear from and to listen to uh, ordinary Gold Coasters who wanted to raise an array of different issues with him. One of the reasons I did it, Mr Deputy Speaker, not only because of the opportunity it provides to provide a platform to my constituents, but also because there was widespread concern and indeed a negative perception about the city which had been brought to my attention through various media, that the Gold Coast was being overrun with organised criminal gangs. The previous, state, uh, the previous state LNP government, the Newman government, uh, moved swiftly some time ago uh, in relation to what they called the Vlad laws. Those were laws that were directed toward doing what it could to, out, to crack down on outlaw motorcycle gangs and, more broadly, on criminal gangs across the city. It needed to happen, and we saw as a result of the decisive action that was taken by the former Newman government that the city was cleaned up in a fairly short period of time. And I've got to say, having spoken with so many different people on the Gold Coast, there was widespread relief that decisive action had been taken that made a difference to the feel of the city and that thwarted the attempts by those organised criminal gangs who more often than not, and certainly anecdotally, but I know from speaking with police as well, more often than not were the instigators and the distributors of a lot of illegal narcotics. So in that respect, the legislation that's before the House today builds on the good work that's been done at both a state level but also at a federal level. Minister Keenan, following some brawling between various outlaw motorcycle gangs, uh, moved to establish uh, one of the first joint strike forces on the Gold Coast. Uh, this sees collaboration between federal and state police officers, 
other authorities such as immigration, the tax office, working in a comprehensive way to ensure that maximum pressure is applied against those who would seek to benefit from being engaged in criminal activity and from peddling drugs. So that was a terrific step forward. The legislation that's before the House now builds upon uh, the solid foundation and the important work that's been undertaken thus far in relation to my electorate of Moncrief, but more importantly across the city of the Gold Coast. One of the great concerns that we had, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, was that the previous Labor government took the very short-sighted decision to shut down the Australian Federal Police Office on the Gold Coast. As Australia's sixth largest and fastest growing city with a population of more than 500,000 people, uh, I was uh, not literally but figuratively left dumbstruck that a Labor federal government could be so short-sighted as to shut down the federal police officers on the Gold Coast. It played a crucial role in relation to investigation of organised criminal gangs and Labor walked away from the city. But I shouldn't be surprised. It's consistent with the Labor Party, who has absolutely no regard for the Gold Coast, no inclination, no interest or no time. In fact, under successive Labor governments, the only time you saw a federal Labor minister on the Gold Coast was when they travelled there once a year to speak at the annual conference of, I think, the Australian Workers' Union, or one of the unions, uh, which always takes place on the Gold Coast. And can I just say, for the benefit of the President of the Labor Party, who of course is in the chamber, that we welcome, Mr President, uh, Labor Party holding their union conferences on the Gold Coast. We value their business. But that notwithstanding, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, it is still a great shame that Labor should be so short-sighted. But I guess they are but fleeting tourists, Labor ministers, from time to time. So, having said that, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, it's important legislation that's before the House. Uh, it implements tough penalties for gun-related crimes. It increases the operation and effectiveness of serious drug and precursor offences. Uh, it increases penalties for forced marriage offences, as well as ensure our criminal offence regimes are robust and effective, and of course ensures efficient arrangements for administering criminal law and related provisions. Uh, it's part of the coalition government's clear and consistent commitment to tackling crime and towards ensuring that across Australia our communities are kept safe, but particularly in relation to the Gold Coast. I take local law and order issues very seriously on the Gold Coast. Uh, that's why I was pleased not only did we have the Joint Strike Force, but we were able to roll out additional CCTV cameras across the city. The Gold Coast now has one of the widest networks of CCTV cameras, and I know from the many police that I've spoken with, as well as with the Gold Coast City Council, that they play a very effective role, not only in cleaning up crime through the ability to be able to get evidence directly from those videotapes, but also, of course, Mr Deputy Speaker, in the prevention of crime, as police and others are able to respond in a proactive way to trouble that might be brewing, and thereby ensuring that we actually prevent assaults and other issues like that from occurring. Uh, it's important work, and it does require an ongoing substantial commitment from the federal government to make sure our communities are safer. I know in communities like Ashmore and Narang, Southport, as well as, of course, Surface Paradise, Benoa, Broadbeach Waters, Broadbeach and other suburbs, Mr Deputy Speaker, like Mermaid Waters and Mermaid Beach, that people want to know that the federal government has some investment in the city. We do. This legislation continues it, and I absolutely commend the bill to the House. Thank you. It being 7 p.m., in accordance with the resolution agreed to earlier, the debate is interrupted. Clerk.